So this is mainly aimed for Ungun and Sue. And Ungun didn't ever get back to me, so. But I am recording it. Sue, are you there? Yes. Oh, hi. Hi. How are you? OK. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah. Nice to see you. I wish I was on the beach with you. <laughs> that looks wonderful. I took a picture on there against the beach. <laughs> yeah, I like it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, I'm going to um, hopefully get download everything I need to download real quick. Um, I'm going to share. Is it just screen. me? I think it's you and Josh is here. I thought Ungun really was interested. He was asking me, when am I going to do it? And he told oh. me four o'clock on, he told me this is why I picked this day that Nancy can't do it so Ungun could do it. So I'm hoping Ungun will join us. Uh, you are recording it, right? I am recording it, yeah. Good, good. So they can watch it later. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, All right, thank so you. This is for Ungun. Ungun, where are you? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Him. Yeah. Um, all right, so I will share my screen so you can kind of, there's some data I think I want you guys to get. So um, it's, so I took the slides, the first slides, and I modified them and I called it uh, workshop two at the title. But they're, they sort of start out all the same, but if you come down, there's a workshop two, kind of, um, hi, Siang. <laughs> uh, there's a workshop two slide. And right after that, um, three slides past that on slide 14 is a Excel sheet that if you can, we're gonna go over importing it real quick. I know we went already went over that and I don't wanna spend a lot of time with stuff we already did, um, but because we'll just never get ahead, you know, we'll never get anywhere. But um, if you go to the shared drive and download that, um, that would be helpful. Um, so I'm going to um, download it myself, I think. And also the game players. Now I'm not going to end up really using the game players, but you know what? Go ahead and download it just in case. All right. And then from the source, I need to download our script, but you don't. Unless you want to, you can get it later. It's better actually if you don't see it and type, you'll learn better if you're kind of typing as you go. You know what I mean? Okay. So let me go over to All right. Uh Sue, can you see my screen? Uh let me see. I was looking for the Yes, I can see your screen. Okay, great. So let me know um if I'm okay to start. Are you guys okay with me starting? Yes, it is. Hey. Hi, guys. Hello? Hi. Yep. OK, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and get started then. OK. All right. Hello? I heard someone. OK, maybe not. So I just want to do a quick review from the first workshop. In that first workshop, I was um, explaining that in R, you have data frames which are also now with the tidyverse universe being called tibbles. They're more like enhanced data frames. Um, this is like an Excel spreadsheet with rows and columns, okay? Um, uh, the other thing I told you last time was that the way you often work in R is you have an object that you get, you assign something to. So you have a function or some R code that creates a an object, um, including data. So it doesn't have to be a function. I, I modified this, I want it to be more general. It's just whatever you're doing and you, that you wanna create some grouping of data in some form or structure, you can give it a name. Um, the other thing I wanted to remind you is that hashtag um, is, starts a comment. So from wherever that is to the end of the line is ignored by R. All right. Um, we're going to load some data here in a second. And actually, what I need to do is get over to, um, I need to open R myself here. 
our studio, actually, to be precise. I'm opening up our studio. And I don't like the way it's set up. So real quick, if you remember, I um, on my laptop, this is stored forever. But here um, in the computer lab, I think it gets erased every time. So um, I'm going to increase my font size for you guys online. And I'm going to go with, I think it's Cobalt, and apply. It's going to tell me it's going to restart our studio. That's OK. OK, so now I have everything the way I want it. I'm going to minimize the um, bottom two panes with those little buttons right here. They let you kind of go halfway or full page. That's what the little double one is like halfway. OK. Um, you always start up out here in the source with a blank untitled R script where you can write your code. Or if you open up R script you've worked on in the past, you can open it here as well. Okay, so I'm going to go into file, open file, and I'm going to go to my downloads. Now you don't need to do this because um, you don't have the um, script already so this is you know so you're going to have a blank script and in your blank script you can save it just going to file save as and then you can decide where you want to put it and um, if you're here you know you can upload it then later to your own drive but um okay so going back over to here i believe this is going to let me make it full screen and tab over yes good let me get around. Okay. All right. So um, let's start out by importing data. So the, the easiest way to import data, but it's not always the most convenient, but maybe for your students, it'd be fine as you use the, the tab key at the top and go to file import data. Okay. And you can choose what to import it from. And I'll tell you why this is not um, always ideal. So let's go and we're going to go to file, open file, and I'm going to pick, hold on, which one did I tell you we were going to do? Sorry, I got to remember. The Jagia BA1E, and then you're going to import the Ann Arbor rental. Um, we're going to call it that too. Okay. So let's go over here. We're going to go to the Jagia, and we're going to open it. Now, this um, Excel is often used in conjunction with um, So why did it do this? Hold on. File, import data set from Excel. Oh. I have, I didn't know that the computer, I got to talk to Pat about this. It's not storing what we, but I loaded before it should. I'm going to have to give him some packages that he has on here. Um, so, Cecilia, yeah. uh, the setup of the uh, all the computers uh, in the uh, classroom has been set up that way because it intentionally set up that way because uh, users are not allowed to save any file on it. So whenever you restart the computer, so a whole hard drive and operating system will be freshly uh, refreshed by uh, the server. Right. No. Oh, yeah. So I'm aware of that, but um, Pat put a basic um, packages on the R that we're that's in here, and it just it would be helpful not to have to reinstall them. But anyway, so now I'm gonna. So on your end, you should have got when uh, you click to open Excel, you should have been able to get to um, this, right? So are you there with this, Sue? Yes. Okay. So this finds it, and then over here in the name, instead of calling it this big thing, we're gonna call it DAT2. And then on the sheet, it's gonna give you in this dropdown all the, all the sheets in this Excel file. There's a lot of data to play with in this Excel file. We're gonna go with Ann Arbor Rental, okay? And we don't need to set a range, it's fine. You can set a range if you wanted for whatever reason. 
Um, and then over here, it shows you what the code is. We're just going to click import and it's going to pop open the view of that data. And down in the environment, it tells us that we have 40 observations and four variables. So it just can kind of confirms what we are seeing there. Um, I'm going to close it. And um, what you can do um, is if you're going to work with this data set a lot, you may not have to want to go through all those steps. You may just want to um, run your code. So um, you're going to, what you want to do is copy over from the console. The console gave you the code that it used. The R console told you what it received as instructions and you'll get this um, information. Now this little plus is unneeded when you're writing code on the, on the script side. Okay, one important thing that I wanted to back up is that there's a couple of um, libraries that we probably want to include right off the bat. Um, and I have a feeling I have to reload GG at tidyverse. Let me try it. Okay, this command on num row number two is um, a utility command. It just clears everything. If you've been working a long time and you're not sure that sometimes things get defined in weird ways and you just want to clear everything and start all over, you can use that. Um, the library tidyverse is not going to work for me or Josh. So we're going to have to quickly install it all over again. This is the part that um, is not great. So fortunately, I'm not teaching in this computer lab. I'll be teaching off my laptop and my students will have their laptops. So I'm hoping this step will not have to be done every time. Yeah. <laughs> so um, it's a big package, so it might do this for a while. So I'm trying to open, so I'm trying to open the Excel file in R, but it's just opening the Excel file on C. <laughs> okay. Did you go to import data set and uh, um, file import data set from Excel? From Excel. That'll open. I was going to open. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so this is going to take a little while. Unfortunately, I wish I would have realized this and come in here earlier. I apologize. Um, Sue, on your end, it's already installed, right, from last time? Uh, yeah, yes. Okay, uh, while this is installing, I'm going to go back to the presentation and um, keep talking. Okay, so this is this option one that is what we did. And then option two, um, you can copy from the console for future use, like I said. You just got to remove a little, any little plus signs that the, the console adds. Um, when you're looking at the data, as if you saw in the console when we did that, I don't know if I can get up there. We, it might be too much. I don't know what if the buffer is going to have it. Oh yeah, there it is. Okay. Right. Yeah. So it it already put in the um, function view, which is opens up its own. Um, tab you can also re you can click on it down here in environment and you'll see it that, that way as well well hold on it's still loading the package so it's not going to do it until it's done and now i'm going to get two of them <laughs> okay um that's okay um all right then um there's a very convenient function called head and there's also tail so the head is the first six rows in your in your data frame, and uh, the uh, tail is the bottom six rows, and it'll put it in the console. So you, if you type that in the script, you'll get to see what your variables are called. So that's it's really helpful for that. Okay, um, we're going to be focusing on the tidyverse universe approach, but just so you know, some basic R reference: the data frame with square brackets. The first space is for rows. The comma is important. The second area is for columns and the closed square bracket. If you leave these blank, they mean keep everything. Um, okay. So DF4 comma is all row four, all columns. And then you can specify a column with a dollar sign. And even though we're doing the tidyverse, this is sometimes very useful. So it's like we use that in itself too with the dollar sign to reference the whole. 
Yeah, so this just means, yeah, DF dollar sign means the whole column two. It's like you're pointing to a vector, you know. Okay, so some basics. Um, we talked about this last time that you want to always start by running tidyverse. And that sort of um, part of tidyverse, tidyverse actually pulls in a whole bunch of different packages. One of the packages is dplyr. And dplyr is um, just a really, really efficient way to do um, a whole bunch of mainly loopings like if then or um, if, you know, it takes all that language out. If you've ever done coding, you don't need to do that. The dplyr avoids that and is more efficient. But basically, you don't need to worry about that. There's these five functions that we're going to be using filter, arrange, select, mutate, and summarize. Okay. And we're going to go through each one of those with some examples. I know I kind of went over them last time a little bit fast. Now that we're all set up, I wanted to start jumping in and having us code. Then there's very powerful and useful group by. Um, another important thing that I told you last time is um, you frequently are going to be um, creating subsets or doing things um, that are on, based on conditional statements. So the conditional is equal to, to ask the question, is something equal to is two equals. The rest of them all are probably what you're used to working with. Greater than, less than, not equal to is an exclamation mark in front of the equal, greater than or equal to or less than or equal to. Okay, and I already had you get this to prep for it. Okay, uh, I wanna go ahead and jump into piping. This is something um, originally I was gonna leave to the end, but it's really one of the big um, advantages of working with tidyverse and it makes your, your code pretty easy to read almost like a sentence. Okay, so you're gonna string together commands with this um, uh, percentage greater than percentage. And that is what in R is called a pipe. Um, in that R for data science book, um, it's in chapter 18, they talk about that. It makes your code easier to read and understand and learn. And you don't have to name intermediate objects. So sometimes you wanna do a series of things. If you don't do this, you have to name each one to use it in the next step. Um, so the kind of the framework it looks like is there's some object, which there's something that's gonna be called object and you're assigning to that, ob to that object, which is a name for it, a data frame that is going to have something done to it, then something else done to it and yada, 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 and still something end done to it. And that the final result is gonna be called object. Okay. It's just the same math concept of function composition where you do something, you know, um, you start here at the inside, do something point one to the data frame and we'll take the result and do something point two and then take what you get from that all the way up to the outer function, right? Okay. There's a nice little option in tidyverse. I don't highly recommend you use it a lot. You're not doing an extensive programming, but it kind of helps the sentence read in like left to right, like we're used to. So it's a right assign. So you can start with a data frame, you do one, you do two, you, you know, keep going after you've done enough things, you call it, you write assign it, the object name on the right. So that's just, your students may like that and just might make more sense to them that you go to the right and that's when you're done, you name it. Um, there's some kind of caveats with um, pipes and I don't think you're gonna come into it with BAI 210, um, but just so you're aware, if you wanna do merging, it's probably not a good idea to do it with pipes. Pipes are fundamentally linear, as I showed you. Um, there is a really helpful um, additional um, operator, sorry, I couldn't think of the word operator, which is the, ampers, uh, the dollar sign, sorry, percentage, dollar sign, percentage. And what that does, it's sort of the, tidyverse equivalent of getting that column. So it pulls out an individual, uh, lets you pull out individual vectors that get past the functions. And I'll move this out of the way, Josh. <laughs> um, this like, uh, we're gonna do this and let's go ahead and, let's go ahead and jump back over and try this. So let's go back over to R, maybe I'm ready now. I don't know. Um, did you install it again? Yeah, you're gonna need to install it so that you can run it. 
and it should look, remember we talked about this last time, I have an older version of R in here. So I get all these warnings, but you guys should just get it. Um, and then the, uh, I don't know if library Magritte R is all, I think it might be automatically um, installed with Tidyverse, it is. Okay, so run these two libraries and Josh, you're gonna need to go ahead and install Tidyverse. So go come down to the fourth pane and um, in the fourth pane, there's the third tab is packages. And then you're gonna go over here to this little install button. And it's gonna open up a little GUI in inter oh, yeah. and in there you type, yeah. Now, if you go online and I, I've learned a lot of R just by going online and asking questions, a lot of times you have to install the package for the answer, mm -hmm. you know, so. Okay, so far today, we've already installed three libraries of functions. So we're on our way. Um, and I wanted to show you, um, so this MT cars data, data set is a um, one that comes standard with, I think with the base R. So we can see, we can just see it, just do head MT cars. It's already been loaded for you. So you can see some info on that. And the Star Wars one was another one that I had shown you. So let's say we wanna get the mean of the miles per gallon. So you could say MT cars is a data frame you're gonna be working with and you're piping it, but you're using this alternative pipe, which is um, percentage dollar sign percentage, because you just wanna access one column in this data frame. And we're gonna take the mean, and now we just name the variable that from our data set. And notice that I get these two versions of MPG. So the one with a little, what I think is an eraser, I'm not sure what they think it is, but that's the one that's a column in the data. And it doesn't matter, I think it's still gonna say MPG, which is fine. So now you can hit, remember, control enter runs that line of code. And so down in the console, you see that the average miles per gallon is uh, 20.1 to round to one decimal. Okay, so um, I wanna just go back and check. I think there was some more things I wanted to load. Um, I don't think we're gonna be using them, so I'm not gonna worry about it. If you have an error that you can't find a function, it's probably because you haven't loaded the library. Which function did it get you, give you an error for? Um, oh, did you put this library in a great R? Mm -hmm. That comes with Tidyverse, so it's installed, so you just, but you have to open it. So when you type the word, I think I told you guys this last time, you install packages, but, um, mm -hmm. uh, That's why. <laughs> so what happens is even though you've installed a bunch of packages, you have to open the library when you, the library command basically opens them and makes them available for this session of R. And that's basically to save um, memory because there, you could, you know, have so many packages downloaded that it would be a mess for your um, processor to have all that open. Okay, so Um, okay, so Josh, did you get this MT cars dollar sign mean MPG to work? Awesome. Yep, cool. All right, now we're gonna talk about some of these verbs. These are verbs. So the first thing is filter, make subsets. Okay, this is something you're gonna need to do um, or your students are gonna need to do. It's fairly straightforward. Um, filter and the data frame and then the condition and then whatever condition when for that variable, when that condition is true for that variable, you're gonna get those observations pulled out, okay? So I'm gonna show you how to do that, doing it. Um, cylinder four is gonna be called, I'm gonna actually pipe it just cause I want us to get used to piping. And I'm going to filter. Now, as I start typing, it 
sometimes, at least at, on my personal computer, will give me as I start typing the variables that are in that data frame. But this one doesn't want to. That's okay. Okay, there it is. Cylinder, I can click on it. Equals. It, it kind of makes sure you don't type wrong. You know, so let's say I want to say, and I remember it's not, I'm not setting cylinder equal to four. I'm asking the question. So I make a double equal sign. Is cylinder equal to four? When that's true, it's going to pop these out. Okay, and what I can do, if you remember, this was another little thing you can do. You can put a parentheses around the whole thing. And that means even though you've, so actually, let me do it both ways. Let me not, let me do it, not do that. Okay, so we do that. And now we can do a head on cylinder four. And you can see that the column that says cylinder um, is fully, um, let's see if I can get there somehow, hold on, <laughs> trying, okay. The column of cylinders is all four. And it will be throughout the whole thing because that's what you, you subset using that condition, okay? Now, if you wanted everything except cylinder four, you could, um, so give that as a hands-on. Let's call it not period cylinder. Remember, this is just a title. The period here means nothing. It's just part of the title of the object, the name of the object. Now, go ahead and try to get everything except cylinder four. This is a little hands-on. I'll give you a hint. Start, you're going to start out the same way, but when you get to the condition, it's going to be a little bit different. It's going to be cylinder not equal to four. All right. Does that make sense? Now, one of the things I want to... Um, show you is that we just did that i'm going to copy that line but now i'm going to put i'm going to wrap it in parentheses so if i wrap this line in parentheses when i ran it a second ago notice over here on the console and it didn't um actually give me any output because when you do when you do things and you give it a name r stores it in its memory it doesn't show you what it did but when you put parentheses around it, like I have on line 20, now it actually did what I said it to. It gave it a name and it gave me the output on the console. So it's kind of a nice uh, little thing that sometimes can be, if you get in the habit of using it, you know you want to see what you're doing as you go, it helps. So I'm just going to pause for a second. Um, are you guys with me? Do you need me to slow down or? Sue, how you doing? Okay, I got an error. Um, the last statement on uh, not cycle uh, cylinder four. Uh, it says um, a particular object of class logical. Did you have any kind of space in here? Uh, where? In the title, in your object uh, name. Is there any space? Yes. You can't have a space. It can only accept periods. Or if not, the whole thing has to be switched together. Oh. Uh, Cecilia, just for your information, uh, yes. my understanding is Josh is teaching BS 113 and possibly 210, and Sue is teaching 210 and 211. I mean, this is like a great stuff. I mean, this is like a great art programming, but uh, for them, for those people uh, who are teaching 210 and 211, yes. how this is kind of things that they don't have, they don't, they don't, they don't need it like immediately. What they need to do is to import data uh, using, I mean, each is the easiest, easiest way possible uh, using yeah, so uh, some of the icon and input the data in it and use it like, for, for example, in order to run the regression analysis, use the LM function and I know how to run the analysis based on data imported, that kind of stuff. I think that's kind of more important. I mean, just, that's my stuff, but uh, this is great stuff. I mean, this is going to be really great. So stuff, but... in order to use that, you need to import the data. So I'm going to do it right now. Okay. Um, I'm going to import the data and I'm going to do it right now. Um, things. I think a lot of times you're going to need to create subsets or select columns or do things like that. So this is just the basics of kind of getting around without feeling totally lost. Right. So, uh, but my experience is if you start using even 
pipes, uh, many of the stones will lose it. So, I mean, this is kind of like a, uh, not very high end for some of the people like you, but they, uh, some of the people who never have uh, experienced like a programming language, uh, they don't know what's going on. So for Sue and Josh, uh, when you use uh, R to our students, remember they never have done any programming before, even not even HTML. So it's pretty possible my recommendation is to import data using menu, not even the code, okay? Code, if you have to re-import uh, re like multiple times, that's necessary, but most of the cases, for, we, uh, for the data set, they need to import is uh, for each question. So what you can do is just import the data from data set and run like a NOVA analysis or regression analysis quickly. That's pretty much what you gotta do. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so you, if you want, I can get away, I can stop doing pipes. I just think pipes make everything easier to read. I mean, this, for these people, it's okay. I mean, they are like much, uh, like probably they, uh, both of them will understand what you're, what you're doing. Uh, Sue has an engineering background, Josh is math mathematical background, so they know what's going on. But in their, in, in the classes for BS210 and 211, uh, so we need to use like easiest, easiest possible methodology, easiest possible way to use. Okay, I, so Seung, mm -hmm. in the um, PowerPoint, I did not mm -hmm. use the pipes when I was defining all the, the actions. The yeah, filter is okay. Oh, uh, so that way. So for logical operator, yeah, that's pipes. needed. Uh, Sorry, you can see it with pipes or without pipes? Okay. Uh, probably without pipes. I mean, you have the option. I'll, I'm in here. I'm showing it with pipes. Uh, you can do it with or without piping. I just think that probably without pipes. Uh, what Sue probably needs in two, uh, two ten is uh, what do you need? Like a t test, uh, some probability calculating, some probability, and another test kind of thing, right? Right, Sue. Right. Yeah. So, yes, but to do descriptive true. statistics, we need to know a, a little, we need to get through some of this. You have to be able to filter out data. Yeah, exactly. So that's what I'm just showing you the mechanics on how you filter out data. Okay. So, okay, so just, uh, this is the hands on, okay. So um, when you're gonna create a filter and you put a condition, you can string conditions together. You can use the and ampersand for and, the vertical line for an or, or the exclamation mark for a not. So go ahead as a hands-on, try to take that, make a subset in empty cars, uh, horsepower equals 110. And uh, like Seung said, probably without, he's suggesting without piping, um, I, I guess you can decide what you think, um, but the, um, I'm gonna call it sub one. And then what you can do then is filter. This is without piping. And then you put the data frame name as the first argument. And then you put the condition. So this condition is um, that the horsepower, which is HP, is equal to 110. And sorry, I should have let you do that without giving you the answer. Okay, you can try it below with piping. Okay, and the second hands-on is for data to set two, make a subset of listings with more than one bedroom and rent less than 950 and use the right-sided assignment arrow. Right-hand, right-sided assignment arrow so that you can just read it left to right. Are you there on that, Sue? Are you ready to see the answer? I'm running it. Oh, I made a mistake somewhere. Uh, percent, the piping between the 2%, do you put equal sign? 
No. Yeah, that's why it's wrong. Okay, let's. This is what it should look like. Uh, sorry, sorry, saying this is. I did every. I did the whole presentation with pipes. Okay. I just think they're easier. So that too, and then a pipe, which is. Um, that means you start with your data frame and then you send it to the verb and the verb is going to filter beds greater than one and rent less than 950. And then. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, I, I, I'm still looking at the uh, empty cars. You're talking oh, about sorry. Empty a cars. different data. Sorry, empty cars. Oh, that's why you were stuck. Okay. Yeah, the piping between the 2% sign do you put equal for 110 or do you what do you put in right here for the uh oh greater than okay you're putting greater than yeah i got that one um in the parenthesis but not greater than yeah so don't think of it it's the greater than sign it just means pass this on you're going to take this and pass it on you're you're sending it on Yes, 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 I got that now. Thank you. Sure. Okay, so you're you're clear on that one and yes. Okay, so this one with pipes would be like this. Then um the next one was working with data set two. And I was challenging you to go ahead and do a compound condition. So the condition um, in the in the in the hands-on challenge is you want listings with more than one bedroom and rent less than 950. So bed is greater than one and rent is less than 950. And then I suggested you could um, write assign it. Now, if I run this, I won't see anything because I've assigned it. So in the background, it now has a name. But if I want to actually see the results, I will put parentheses around the whole thing. And I, in the console, I see my four options that fit this. Josh, how are you? Are you up to speed on this? Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. All right, next up, um, you can use, if you have a lot of things you want to filter, so like if in some of the data sets you may give your students, they may have categorical variables that have a lot of things. So the way you do a filter for that is this um, operator in. Okay, so here you, fil you filter, here's a data frame, and then, and this is the Star Wars data set, we're saying is the species, which is the name of the variable, in this um list of possibilities now notice i have a little c open parentheses and because these are not numeric they're actually um strings i put quotes around each thing all right so that's how i make a little vector that i'm checking so i want to know when i look at species and let's just do um a head on that head on star wars just to see what that looks like okay so over here you can see I got to make my screen a little bigger so more comes up. Okay, so you can see on the far right that there's different species in this data set. So if I want to get the ones that are humans and droids, okay, uh, I can call this sub three. I'm going to assign to sub three this um, subset that I'm taking out of Star Wars. And I'm going to filter so that species, which is the name of the column, is in this vector that I'm going to consider human. I got to make sure I spell it exactly right. And droid. And now I hit, um, I can hit enter or I can put a wrap this in a parentheses. And by the way, I can break this to a, the line below. There's no problem doing that, okay? 
R doesn't care about you breaking things to a new row just to have more space or make it look better. So now I've, I'm looking at the subset that's just humans and droids. So if you look in, your window may be too small. You can, you can slide, or slide this middle pane over and then rerun it. And our studio is trying to fit only what goes on the screen. And then down below, it'll tell you how many variables didn't fit in like a light gray. You can't even see it up there, but I, it says, um, and three more variables are, Oh yeah, so if you don't do the extra set in parentheses and you wanna see what you did, you can also just type the name of the object and hit control enter. Okay, that's another way to see it. Another way to see it is you highlight it. Any code you highlight and hit control enter, it runs that code. So those are three different ways to see it, okay? All right. Um, okay, create a subset of date, that, two, this is a typo, I should say that two, of records with number of baths as one, two, or three. So go ahead and try that. Tell me when you're ready. It was called that two. <laughs> it should be that two, not that three. Yeah, and the idea I'm trying to get you is to use this in operator. Hmm. No, this is that two. It's the Ann Arbor listings of apartments or houses, I don't know. I think they're, they're rentals, whatever they are. I can see that for students with the 13 inch screen, this might be difficult. Yes. It helps to have two uh, bigger screen, yes. Yeah. So um, you can see down below, I'm looking at, I'm doing a head on that too, just so I see what, what's there. So I can make sure I, I type in my variable name correctly. So let's call this sub four. And I'm gonna do that two and filter, and I'm going to go with bath in C one comma two comma three. Okay, and I run that, I don't get any results because it's stored it as sub four and I have to put parentheses around it to actually get mm -hmm. to see it. Or I can just run sub four. Okay, so one of the things that I just realized um, I know and maybe you don't know is that um, there, there is in this data uh, like one and a half bathrooms and two and a half bathrooms, okay? Mm -hmm. So if you wanna see that, I'm gonna jump ahead and just show you contingency tables. Because it actually was relevant for this problem. <laughs> um, so the way you could do that is say that two, and then we're going to do uh, parentheses, dollar sign parentheses, because we actually are going to pull one of the columns out and we're going to send it to the table command, and I'm going to put in back. And when I do that, it shows me um, how many of each category of bath I have. So there's 16 um, records that have one bath, four that have one and a half, two that have 13, right? You see it? That's what it's doing. Now, if I 
do the exact same thing. I can copy my code, but now I change it to sub four. You'll see that we were subset to only the whole number baths. And well, we left four out. Okay. So that's how, kind of how like you can do that and then check it. Okay. Another thing you can do, um, as long as they're categorical, it's kind of, it will give it to you. And if they're numerical, but it's going to be super long is you can do two variables. So we could do table on bed, bed and bath. And it's a two way contingency table. Okay. And the numbers in the grid are just the number of records that meet those conditions in the column headers and the row headers. Is that clear? Yeah. Okay. All right. There's another useful operator sometimes. Um, you, I wouldn't necessarily show it to your students because they don't need to go there, but this is the not in. So if you don't use the not in, you have to take the in and then take everyone out that's not in that subset. <laughs> Um, you have to load a library called HMISC, H miscellaneous. Okay, that's a not in operator. That's just a, like the opposite of in. The complement. Oh, there's my little answers. Okay, now we're going to go to the next one, which is a range. This is also something that's important in. I'm sorry. I, I What's the library? HM what? H. I sure. Um, I'm going to. These. Notes are in the um, shared space, but just so oh. you know, it's a capital H and then MISC. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Okay, um, we're gonna move on to a range now, which sorts. Mm -hmm. So this is something I do in my 211. We, we have the students uh, sort the data. So we're gonna rearrange rows by increasing order of variable one, and then with ties go to decided by variable two, and then this optional des descending DESC means you go for the reverse order. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's try that with MT cars. Let's sort by weight and then by MPG. Okay, so give that a name and then you're going to subset or you can do this all in one line. Now, don't do that. Do it, do it, call this first part, of, uh, give the first part a name and then we're going to subset to the weight of 3.44 to confirm the sorting worked. Okay, so weight and MPG. Okay, so call this um, cars two maybe. And we're gonna put in our empty cars. Now we're gonna use this new verb called arrange. So we, le we learned filter, now we're learning arrange. And we're gonna order this by um, no, I can't remember. <laughs> weight and then MPG. Okay, weight and then MPG. All right. So we run that. Oh, I typed something wrong. So see how R tries to tell you and help you? Yeah. Okay. All right, so now that I have that, I want to look at a subset of this. So I'm going to now filter this to when, um, I think, what did I have on there? Weight is 3.44. Um, so weight is equal to 3.44. All right, this is just to confirm that it did. Um, all of these have the weight of 3.44. And you can see that the, um, the M miles per gallon was used to break the ties and it's in ascending order by miles per gallon now. Does that make sense? Okay, I'll wait for you to catch up. Let, give me a thumbs up or let me know when you're cut up. You good? You got it? All right, great. Uh, Oops. The next hand, uh, useful function to, to rename variables is rename. Sometimes, um, and we'll get to this, I think, when we open up the game players. Um, 
Sometimes the variables are, have spaces in the names when you bring them in from Excel, and they're really difficult to work with that way. So I often um, will rename them. And what I did for my students in 211 is I did not have them do that. I did it for them. But just so you know, it's like, you can either go to Excel and rename them so there's no spaces in the names of the columns, or you do it with the rename function. Sorry, next. Oops. All right, so here is the um, code for that, but you guys got it, right? All right, the next one is select. This is important if you want to just choose some columns and to make a subset maybe of just a few of the columns in your data or whatever you, for whatever reason. So it's just the word select. And again, you can either pipe and leave the data frame out or you can put it into the function itself and then the variables that you want to keep. And it's going to keep these variables and in this specified order. So if you want to reorder the columns, this is what you use and it'll drop the rest. So hands on, create a subset of MT cars that has only the, that has uh, only the rows, I just meant to say columns, <laughs> um, columns, uh, MPG, HP, and weight. Yeah, this might be easier for students than piping. I think so. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think different people are different. Probably some people will hate it and some people will love it. Yeah. Um, so after you get MP, after you pull those three out, you want to order them in this order so that the first column is HP, the second one MPG, and the third one is weight, and then sort them by ascending values of MPG. All right, so that's your hands-on task to try. So I'm going to call this cars three, I guess, car three. Um, and we're going to put in empty cars. And we're going to only select those three columns. And those three columns, we want to put them in a specific order. We want HP, horsepower, then miles per gallon, then weight. OK, so we're going to select HP, miles per gallon, and weight. And then after we select them, we're going to sort them by descending order of miles per gallon. OK, now I can put parentheses around this whole thing so I can see it right off the bat. OK, so there we go. I've kept only three columns from that data set. And I've put the columns in the order I wanted to see them in. And I sorted it from the best miles per gallon down to the worst. OK. Let me know when you've di you're caught up with this. So I'm having difficulty being able to distinguish the language to use. I'm going to just draw a photo blank. The dollar sign versus the um, inequalities. The greater than pipe. Yeah. yeah. So I would say for the vast majority of any kind of data frame manipulation, you want to use the greater than symbol, the pipe. Um, the dollar sign is for doing a function on one column. One column. Okay. Yeah. It pulls out one column um, or it can pull out two columns. But it's like if you have to access the columns individually, sort of as vectors, some um, functions were not, they were, they predate the tidyverse and they're not able to work in this framework unless you pull the vectors out themselves and send them into the function as independent vector or vectors. Now would this run if I were to pull type out descending or will it only work for D yes? Huh, I don't know. Let's go to the help. Let's try, you can go in here, let's try typing arrange. Let's see if it tells us in the help. Yeah, no, so it comes up with an error message. It says there's no such thing as descending. Okay. So I guess I'm 
that's the other way to figure it out, right? <laughs> Try it. <laughs> all right. Um, all right, so there's some helper functions that you may or may not want to show your students. Uh, I'll, I just wanted to show them for completeness. If you want to pick certain columns, you can say starts with and then put what it starts with, ends with, contains. You can do a number range. So like, let's say you have a bunch of variables. Now, actually, in my data sets, this did happen. I had variables that were like x1, x2, x3. You can say number range, quotes on the variable, the the string part of it and then the range of numbers that you actually want and so that's a way to select just a subset of all your variables you can also just have a range so if you see them in order and you just want that range you just put the name of the first one colon and the name of the second one last one the book ends and you get everything um, then there's this really nice one which is you can pull out the columns you want to the front let's say but you want everything else, you want to keep everything anyway. So you put the word everything. Okay, so I, I didn't mean for you guys to see the answer. I forgot to make that <laughs> up here. Okay, don't look at the answer. <laughs> Create a new version of Star Wars that has the columns ordered as name, then home world, and then everything else. Okay. So maybe I'm gonna call this star two. And I'm gonna rearrange using a range the columns in the Star Wars data set to just be the name and then the home world. And see, it comes out and I can select it so I don't make any typos. And then I'm gonna use this helper function everything just to make sure I get everything else. And then I'm gonna enter that. What happened? Oh, it might not like that. That's weird. Hmm. Nope, it's something's wrong. Hey guys, um, I have to go now. I have a class in six. Oh, um, okay. So have fun. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Sam. I'm Mrs. Jackson, a really great teacher. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah. I wish I learned her from Cecilia. I mean, she's like, a oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, she's kind of, yeah, uh, teaching us like a, I mean, you're but, welcome. Uh, Thank you. All right. Uh, talk to you later, guys. Okay. Bye. 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 Okay. So, um, <laughs> oh, I know what the mistake was. I said arrange when I meant select. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. My mistake. I meant to say select. <laughs> We're, we're trying to select, we're not ordering, we're selecting. That's why it said, I have no idea what you're really asking me to do here. And um, just to make it easier on Josh, I'm moving it up because I realize he's kind of looking down here. And so you can put this whole line on the next line so it's easier to read all on one place, mm -hmm. right? So once again, I can put parentheses around the whole thing so I can see what I did if it worked. So we see that name and uh -huh. homeworld are the first two columns, and then everything else is there, right? Yeah. So once again, we are out of time, and I am happy to keep going if you guys are. You tell me. <laughs> uh, I'm okay. How about Josh? He needs to leave around 5.30, and I'm, oh. um, I've been going since pretty early this morning, so I'll go a little bit more, okay? Yeah, maybe 10 minutes more. You need a break. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I want to get through all the um, very, the verbs, and then I was hoping to give you guys the actual statistics stuff, and I think I can go pretty quick. If you okay. want, we can skip the hands-on. Yeah. I know yes. the hands-on really helps, though, right? We can do that later. But you can do it later. It's in these slides. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, the next one is mutate. So mutate's really okay. useful for... Um, BAI 210 and, and, and 211 and so on. It's where you make new var variables. So it creates new variables at the right end of the data frame. So remember, if you can't see all the way to the right, you're not gonna see the new variable, okay? There's a bunch of math functions you can use in mutate. And I forgot to make this, <laughs> obviously I forgot to go back and do all my appear, have my answers appear 
Okay. <laughs> okay. Here's the challenge. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to make this appear. Hold on. So you guys don't see it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Here's the challenge on the subset. First of all, make a subset of humans from the Star Wars data. So just humans. And then you're going to find their age, which is the difference in the birth year from the year 130. You're going to calculate their BMI, which is kilograms per meter squared rounded to one decimal. And then you're going to do a qualitative BMI, which is if BMI is less than 25, you're going to say that the person is healthy and otherwise they're overweight. Okay? So those are the three challenge mutate, make your own um, variables thing. So I'll get you started. Let's go with, we're going to start out with Star Wars. We're going to pipe that to make a subset of um, humans. So we're going to filter uh, species equals quotes human. Oops. And then we're going to pipe that to mutate. And we're going to make some new variables in here. The first one is age. And you just use one equal sign because you're, you're actually defining it. So age. And I said it was the birth year. Birth year minus 130. Oh, 130 minus birth year. Yeah. And now if to add another defined variable, you're going to put a comma at the end. And you can put it all in one big line, or I like to put it in the next line so I can see it. And BMI. Mm -hmm. So let's, um, BMI is um, kilograms. So um, I happen to know that the mass is the kilograms. So it's mass divided um, kilograms by meters squared. Here we have the height is in centimeters. So you're going to put parentheses and you're going to say height times um, 0 0.01. And then you're going to use a little caret to square it. Okay, comment on, you're going to see what happens with this. We're going to have to come back and fix it. And then we're going to say um, qualitative or whatever you want to call it, BMI. And this is going to be an if else. We're going to say BMI is less than 25. The person in quotes is healthy. Otherwise, remember if then else, I think that was, I kind of went really fast through that, but it's up here in one of the math functions. This is conditional. Let me get my annotation stuff going again. So is this conditional functions if then else? You have an if else is the is the function if else and then you put the condition and then you do what it's to do if it's true or do what it, to do if it's false so it's like, it's like just an Excel statement. exactly it's almost the same syntax too so we want to oops we want to put here overweight So now we can run this and it's going to show us because I don't, I didn't assign it. Oh, that's the other thing. If you don't assign anything, it's just going to show you the results on the console, but then you can't access them to use them anywhere else. So if you want to access it for something else, you want to save it with a name. But if you just hit control enter, you'll see it just pops up. So you see they're all humans. You have their names. You have um, all these variables aren't showing up because they're at the end. Right, so let's go back up and actually on the end of our pipe, let's add another pipe. And this time we're going to select. And now I'm going to say name, age, BMI, qualitative BMI. And maybe I don't care about anything else. Well, maybe I do. I don't, I'll, I'll go ahead and put everything. All right, so let's run that. So now you see it reordered it for me nice and quick. And I can see that the um, the age of the different characters and the year using the year 130, I got it because that was the one that made no one negative. <laughs> and then their BMI, 
and then their qualitative BMI, overweight or healthy. Okay, and everything else. So I was able to do that really quick. And I can actually um, arrange this by sex, for example. All right. So now we see that, oh, we have many of the female <laughs> not have an age and not have a mass. <laughs> so we have a lot of NAs. <laughs> Okay, so that's going to show up here in a second. All right, but that's basically how you do that. So you guys did all right. Um, notice in my solution, I put actually, I used took advantage of the quote of the colon, and I said age to qualitative BMI, so I didn't have to type as much. But, you, you know, it's nothing wrong with doing it the long way. Okay, then there's summarize and group by. So summarize is you don't necessarily have the name of a summary variable, but you could. You collapse the data frame to a single row and outputs the value of the new variable, which is a summary of the existing variable. Okay, so for example, mean height, you would summarize, let's say humans, and we could say mean height, and we would say na.remove equals true, and that will give you the height with removing all the NAs first. Okay, because if not, it's gonna give you an NA, because NAs, remember, NAs are contagious. You have NA in your data, your answer is NA. Um, and so let's go ahead and try that. Let's go ahead and get the mean height on our human data set. And I actually think I didn't name my human. So see, look what, see my code is Star Wars filter humans. I'm going to stop here. I'm going to hit return. I'm going to go up to the end of this line. I'm going to right assign this humans. Rerun that. Now on line 51, I'm going to say humans are now going to be my input to all this, right? I already did that. I don't need to do it again, but I can if I want. But now I'm going to summarize. Um, I mean, I can call it mean height. Summarize. And I'm going to summarize, and here I'll, I'm not piping, I'm going to do it the old fashioned way, putting in the data frame. And then I'm going to summarize that the, uh, I'm going to take the mean of the height, and I'm going to say NA remove equals true. And as I stop, start typing NA, it gives me that option. I can just tab it. What did I do wrong? Hmm. Oh. It's not height, it's it's actually the word E H E I G H T. Oh. Height. There we go. Does that mean you also have to change it in the beginning too? No. That's just you, a name you made up. Oh. Yeah, you name that you name the output that. So it's 177 centimeters. Okay. Now we can do we can add another thing to this. So now I'm gonna do it with piping so you guys I think it's just easier to read with piping. Summarize. Now I'm going to do, I can label it in here. So I can say mean height equals mean height. NA remove equals true. And I can add more summary variables. So this is where all your, uh, you can put summary descriptions in. So I can say, um, I can pick a new column or I can do something to height again. So I can say variance on height equals variance on height. NA remove equals true. And then I can say, okay, well, I also want to find the mean, and I'm making up the names of these variables. You can name them whatever you want. I, maybe I want to find the mean BMI. So I can say, um, mean, I got to make sure I, when I put it in though, it's spelled right, capital BMI, NA remove equals true. All right, something BMI not found. What happened? Variance as in like variance, variance? Yeah, or? yeah, variance. 
it doesn't find BMI. Why does humans not? Hold on. Let me do a head on humans. Did I mess something up? Oh, right. Down here, when I calculated all this, I need to call, I need at the beginning to reassign it to humans. There we go. Now to work. Yeah, so if you do something to a data frame and you want to keep it, you, you rename. So what it is, it's saying humans is going, what I'm going to do here, Josh, to humans, I'm going to do all this mutation. Right? I'm gonna make this reordering of the columns and I'm gonna arrange it by sex. I'm gonna do all that and I need to name the output. And I want it to be my new humans because I'm just rearranging and doing and adding stuff to my humans. That's why I assign it back to humans. So I'm like override, basically I'm saying overwrite what was there before and call it this. Okay, so now I can come down here and it'll work. So I have mean height, variance on the height, and the mean BMI. And I can do anything I want here. OK. Uh, then I wanted to show you group by. So group by does these summary statistics on groups. So let's go back to our humans and do the same thing again, but we're going to and copy and paste the previous line, but now we're gonna add this group by sex to see how different that looks, because that matters, right? So we just copy this line of code, but now we come up here and we hit return on the summarize. We're gonna interject a step in between. We're gonna say group by sex, and then we're gonna pipe the result after grouping. And now you see you have two rows of data. You have your row for females and your row for males. By the way, if you were to look do like a view on that data set after you've done group by. Group by is invisible, but R sees it. Do I make that font bigger? It's good. No, it does it everything. When I made it, it does it everywhere. I'll just, I don't know. You can see that okay? Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> Are you guys caught up with this now? Did you do you see how they use the group by to get summary stats on groups, subgroups? So that might be something you might be using. Um well, two two ten. Also potentially do like standard deviations. Oh yeah. Like so um so, but then again they could just take the square root of the variance anyway. Right. So then I wanted to talk about BAI 210 R. So descriptive stats, there's two ways. You can pull one variable out and get a five number summary plus a mean. So I thought let's go to that. It's actually that too, and do this for the rent. So would that be like the quartiles? Yeah. So we, in order to do that, we would say dat2. Now we're going to do the dollar sign because we need just the column for rent is what we're interested in doing this. And the, instead of summarize, it's summary. And now we name the column rent. So you can see this is, I'm going to put a column in here, comma, descriptive. That's five number summary. Um, the min, the first quadrant, the median, throws in the mean, third quadrant, and a max. Okay, so that's a, a great way to get a quick summary on your any one variable. Okay, sometimes you may want other things. So you can use um, summarize and the stat functions. 
Okay, so it's CR code. So I wanted to show you this. This is going to be on the share drive. Okay. So here you see um, you summarize and then you you name all, like I was just showing you, all the variables you want, mean, variance, SD is standard deviation. And then after you've used it, like SD rent and mean rent, I can use it to create another one, the coefficient of variation, which is nice. Okay, so uh, outliers. So in here, I, I think we're gonna have to, probably not have time for everything else, but maybe we have time to go through this page. Because after this page is, just a listing of all these statistics um, that you can use within mutate all these different things i wanted to show you correlation real quick um hold on all right outliers i think if let me ask you this are you comfortable by following these directions i say using summarize and filter example uh, a value that would be an outlier is if it's greater than the mean plus or minus two standard deviations. So you'd have to write a filter and you'd have to use an or. So you say value greater than the mean plus two standard deviations or value less than the mean minus two standard deviations, right? And then that's your filter. Um, I have it in the R code. So that R code says workshop two. So if you wanna try it, the box plot approach is one and a half times the interquartile range, mm -hmm. range, and that's you can do by doing data frame. You pull out the variable you want. That's why you use a dollar sign and not the pipe. And you say box plot, the variable, dollar sign out. Okay, and then there's the median absolute deviation approach. You need to install another package and it does this too. So just to show you real quick in R, um, I added outliers. Where did I add the outlier? Oh, I had to create some outlier data because it didn't have any. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So this is the way using filter and summarize. Okay. And you can see the, uh oh, oh. Uh, that three not found. Oh, that's because it's that two. That two. Okay, we're going to call it 3B. <laughs> All right. There we go. Um, okay, so now we're going to run this outlier. We see that we have the $6,000 rent outlier. And then I'm going to run the box plot so you can see what, what's nice about the box plot is you get a little figure. So it shows you a box plot and it shows you where the outlier is. Mm -hmm. And yet in the console, it gave you the outlier value. So that's kind of cool. Great. And then there's this library. I'm, I'm going to skip that one. I wanted to show you correlations. So let's say you want a correlations between bed and bath, right? They might be correlated. This is a um, not one of the verbs in tidyverse. All right. I already told you the five verbs. So whenever you want to send information into a function, this is where you use that dollar sign, the percentage, dollar sign, percentage. We're gonna send the variables, columns, bed and bath and get the correlation. So I run that. Uh, oh, that 3B, sorry, that two, that two. And I see that it has a 0 0.67 correlation, R squared. So I can also, maybe you wanna try running, at, this was gonna be hands-on, the correlation between bed, number of bedrooms and rent. Super easy. I mean, I think your students can type that, you know, and it makes sense to them. You can see it's 0.86. I already covered contingency tables. And then in this code is um, the statistics functions for distributions. So we have the, um, the density of a binomial is just, this is where you really, use, this is what Siong wanted me to start at. But honestly, you would get so stuck, like you wouldn't know what to do. Like, but this is using it like a calculator. So D binomial. So this is, you know, um, uh, a seven successes when you have um, 10 tries with a probability of success of 0.87. There you get the associated density to that. 
the P binomial, so they have this um, kind of structure, P binomials, this is discrete, gives you the probability of having up to seven. So you run that and you get the probability up to, you know, one, two, it counts it up, does add, adds it for you. Plus, you would be able to use that function of the mean not to then find the direct, like, not including the one through seven, but say, yes, nine, yes. Or you could just say one minus here. You could oh, say one okay. minus and get the other way. Other way, yeah. Okay, um, Poisson distribution. So, you know, um, seeing four successes with an average of three in the unit of time. Notice it has a little D. They all say POIS, but there's a D in front for the density. There's a P for the probability. And I put this in the slides. So in here is that like actually, oops, sorry. If you look in the slides, it will actually tell you um, what each one of these means. So like P plus sun means X less than or equal to little X, right? Now you have this optional lower tail equals false and it gives you the right hand side of the probability distribution. So there for that, you would say lower tail equals false and that'll give you the values above on the right side. Okay. Um, oops. Ah, sorry. I'm messing up. Okay. Um, the normal distribution. So if you don't put anything in, it is just a standard normal. It's a probability. So P norm is the probability of uh, having uh, associated with X less than or equal to two with a mean of zero standard deviation of one. Okay, just goes to a standard normal. If you want the other side, so let me uh, let me go ahead and click these. So P norm for two, oops, I highlighted it. Okay, P is, is um, X less than or equal to two, you know, it's really high probability, we're not surprised, right? The mean is zero, standard deviation is one. Now, if I want the other side, I want the upper end of the probability distribution, I put this option, lower tail equals false, and I get the other side of it, okay? Now, if I want something that's not a standard normal, I could put the mean and the standard deviation in with these options. So here we see if it's the mean was actually five and the standard deviation is three, you get the probability. Now, the other side that you need besides the probabilities are the quantiles, right? The z-scores. So you can get those straight out by putting in the probability. So Q norm of 0 0.95, you'll recognize it, 1644854. Um, if you want, Q norm of 5%, but you want everything on the right, you can put lower tail false and you'll see you get the same thing. Right, makes sense. Um, if you want the uh, quantile associated with a different mean and standard deviation, you don't have to do the conversion to a z-score. You can just put it straight in and get the quantile out. Okay, and then the student's t distribution works the same way. We have the p in front of the t, meaning the probability, and the Q to give the quantile. And then the input would be the probability. And this is all on the slides. So, okay. Okay, thank you. Yeah, um, so I wanted to show you all that. And then the very last stuff I wanna quickly show you is how to graph. Um, I could spend a lot of time at graphing, but basically you want to say ggplot and the data frame. And um, if you're going to do a scatter plot, you do this mapping. AES means aesthetics, and you have to say what X and Y are. So this is, um, you know what, I'm just going to name that three. I'll assign it from that two. <laughs> It'll make my life easier. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So G, ggplot.3, so I'm just, so here you see from that rentals, square foot is on the x-axis, and notice there's this little zoom button. It's really nice because you can see a big picture of it. All right, and then I'm just going to toggle back to R. All right, now 
Notice on that, I can now add something called geom smooth. This is really helpful when you start looking at um, linear regressions, which is more a 211 topic, but um, so you put a, a moving average, a low S line curve in there. Um, and um, I can maybe try one that's a straight line fit. I would say method equals LM for linear model. SE equals false because I don't want the standard error. It'll If I don't do that, I'll put standard error. And then I can say color equals red and it'll give me a red line. Okay. Um, in here, and I'm going to have this code up there. I'm just going to show you real quick. You can also do um, you can start with a data frame and pipe it through into a, a plot. So here's a geom bar of I start with Star Wars, I mutate, I get if species is human, I'm going to bin, I call it bin species because it's I want humans, droids, and everything else just called other. So I nest these two if else conditions. I create this. You can look through this. And if you don't understand it, please come, you know, if this is something you're going to need to do for any reason, you want to, you know, have questions, come back. But here I put it in ggplot. And um, I needed to say as factor, because if, if not, it doesn't know to treat that as a factor. And then um, I said g on bar, and it gave me the bar chart. And then I can just take this exact same thing and make it into a pie chart with a uh, series of um, commands that are not that hard. Once you know them for one, you can copy them for any other one. Um, and then a histogram. Um, this is a histogram where I put on the x-axis square foot and I I wanted it to break, give me a histogram on square foot, but I, I put fill as a factor of bath. So fill is the color that's inside the, the columns and it's gonna break it out by bath. Now remember bath was numbers, one, one and a half, two. So it can't do numerics for a fill. So that's why when I say as factor, it means treat it like a categorical variable. And then I say, um, bins equals five, you can pick how many bins you want. There's a lot of flexibility. You can Google how to set the end, you know, the size of those bins and really totally manipulate them. Um, one of the things I like to do is do this position equals dodge in my histograms, because I think it's easier to see which are the really, um, you know, dominant, how they compare to each other in height. And then the last thing I wanted to show you was box plot. <laughs> So here's a box plot. All you got to do is send your data frame into ggplot, state what you want for your y-axis, which is a good idea if it's categorical. <laughs> if not, you have way too many boxes. Or you can even leave this out. So let me show you. You can leave this out and just do red. Control copy. I'm going to come down and run it. And I'm going to get rid of the x equals part. I'm just going to delete that out and run it. And so that's the overall rent box plot, but if you wanted it broken out by bedrooms, which makes a lot more sense, you could either probably look at square footage too. Oh no, you can't do square footage. Square footage, you first have to bin it, right? Because it's a continuous, more of a continuous numerical. Okay, so there you go. That was a big ramp up for BA, BA 210R. Um, all of this is in here. And that's it. So we got done in an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> so a little bit longer than I wanted to. I'm sorry. Uh, in my mind, I feel like this is going to go quicker than it actually is. And it's a really good learning for me. Mm -hmm. um, I know that that was fast. That's definitely not a pace that your students will probably be comfortable with. Oh. Yeah. I'm so, so <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So, um, one of the things I can say is you can skip all the part of the tidyverse and go just to the um, the functions. But I think that that was only going to take you so far and then you're going to get really, really stuck. You know what I mean? 
Like you can use it just as a calculator. And um, I'm debating whether or not to do that. My, my 211 class actually needs to take some data and graph it and understand it. And they're gonna have, they're gonna, I'm doing what Nancy does. I'm doing survey data of my fellow, the fellow classmates. So they're gonna need to know how to manipulate data with these verbs. So I have to teach them this. Now mm -hmm. for 210, you maybe you can skip the whole part of the tidy verse and just use the, um, where'd it go? These guys, you know, all the- Yeah, that, the that's what I would do. Yeah, I would do that. Huh? I would do that, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that would be the easier introduction just to have them start with the um, what I call the BAI 210R. Yes. Um, and just start there. And, you know, I, I have to think about it, how I'm going to do this with my students, because they really are going to need to know a little bit more. Yeah. Okay, so. Thank you, thank I you. I highly recommend, too, that students work with Excel open on their data. Mm-hmm in parallel because it can really help them sort of like at least initially see what's going on. Mm -hmm. So, okay, well, hopefully that helped. Um, like I said, this is on that shared drive. So you can see um, all this, all these, they're really pretty easy. Th give it a column of data and it'll do every, you know, anything you want pretty much. And if you're not, if you don't, if you don't remember one of them and you don't have this in front of you, just Google. And just say R, function for mean or function for uh, square root, you know. Thank you. Uh, okay, <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> so, all right, Sue, that's all I got. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> good, good. I'm glad you said that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's good to have a little positive feedback. So have fun with it. And if you know you um, have something that you're not sure you want to go over anymore, just let me know. But yeah, I think that you have you have really a strong fundamental with this information. And you may not need to use it all, but you can kind of from it draw what you need. But the main idea is that you can kind of get around on your own now. Hopefully, with you know, looking up some of these, maybe. Okay. Thank All right, you. Bye. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Good night. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.